Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. On my channel, I always like to find the best performing products for an affordable price. And I think I found a really good option here. This is the Redodo 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery with auto heating functionality. Now there are quite a few advantages of upgrading to a lithium iron phosphate battery. For example, if you have a lead acid battery, an LFP battery will get many more charge cycles. It's a lot more energy dense, meaning it takes up less space and also you save on weight. But there is one major downside to LFP, and that is that it cannot be charged below 32 degrees Fahrenheit, or you could permanently damage the battery and its capacity inside. So it's always important to make sure your batteries have that built-in protection. Now that's where this battery comes into play. This battery has low temperature charging protection and built-in heaters, yet it's less expensive than a lot of the other brands out there that don't have those features at all. Now with my discount code, you can pick this battery up for $436 or around 34 cents a watt hour. So it's very affordable, but how does it actually perform? So in the rest of the video, we're gonna be doing extensive testing on this battery. We're gonna test to see if it pulls full capacity. We're gonna do a max load test to see if it'll handle the max load that it's rated for. And then we'll be doing a teardown to see the build quality inside, to see if the heaters function and if it actually has low temperature charging protection. Let's go ahead and break down the specifications for this battery. For the dimensions, it's a little under 13 inches wide, and I'd plan for around nine and a half inches tall for the connections on top, and it's around six and three quarter inches deep. Now, I did put this on my super accurate Wally World bathroom scale, and it showed 23 pounds. Now, this battery is advertised to have a full 100 amp hours of usable capacity as you discharge it. Now, that's different than lead acid. Remember, lead acid, you can only discharge about 50% without causing permanent damage. This one you can discharge all the way down to 0%, pull a full 100 amp hour. So we'll be testing that. Uh, this is also rated for 1280 watt hours of energy. So it kind of gives you an idea of the watt hours in the battery. Now it does have a 100 amp BMS inside. So you can pull 100 amps continuous or right around 1280 watts from this battery, depending on the voltage. Now when you go to connect up your loads to the battery, you can use these two included M8 style bolts and the main terminals are epoxied in and very durable. There's also a removable handle on the top, so if you wanna carry it around, you can have the handle or remove it if it's in storage. Now, the first test that I wanted to do on this battery was a complete capacity test. So I charged it up with my adjustable power supply to 100%. I connected up my inverter and my shunt and discharged the battery at a 0.2C rate. Now, this is right around 250 watts and is expected to go for about five hours. Well, I came back five hours later and I caught the inverter shutting off from low voltage, so it was perfect timing, and I was able to pull a full 100 amp hours or 1290 watt hours of capacity. So we were able to get advertised capacity out of this battery. Now the next test that I wanted to do on the battery was a max load test to see if it could handle 100 amps output for 15 minutes without having the BMS turn off. So through my inverter, I plugged in a 1200 watt load right around 100 amps and I let this run for 15 minutes. And I didn't have any issues running that load at all. So I decided to step it up to 150 amps or right around 1800 watts. And I was able to do this load for about five minutes or so without the BMS turning off. So this battery does allow you to surge past 100 amps, but just be aware as you go over that 100 amp level, you will be putting extra stress on the batteries and reducing the charge cycles. So if you want the longest lifetime, try to keep it at 100 amps or less. Okay, so we've come to the part of the video where we need to tear down the battery to check the build quality and to also test the low temperature charging protection and the heater functionality. Now, I never recommend that my viewers tear their batteries apart. It voids the warranty. It's dangerous, so do not do this. I'm only doing it so we can see everything inside and test the full functionality of the battery. So let's go ahead and tear this down. Now, we just got the lid off the battery. Looking at the main conductors, the positive wires here are two 8-gauge wires in parallel. These are silicone wires rated for 200 degrees Celsius, and we are glued down at the main positive terminal. Looking at the negative terminal, we're glued down here as well, and these are also two 8-gauge wires in parallel. Let's go ahead and get this out of the battery box so we can see the rest of the components. Oh man, that was one of the hardest batteries I've ever had to remove from a case. It was glued down on the entire bottom of the battery. Now that speaks for the durability, I guess. Uh, looking at the battery itself, you have these two metal uh, plates on each side and they are compressing the cells together with these uh, heavy-duty uh, nylon straps. Now looking at the back, you have four prismatic cells with fiberboard between each one. You have your high temperature sensor here and uh, you have your BMS on top. 
You also have a heating pad on top and then you also have another one on the bottom. We'll be testing that a little bit later. Now, as for the build quality, the cells are connected together with these aluminum bus bars that are welded down. All the balance leads are screwed and glued down, which is really good. You also have your low temperature sensors here to shut off charging whenever it gets below freezing. Um, you have a 100 amp BMS on top. The connections are glued in and uh, there's nothing really to complain about this. Uh, everything is assembled really well. Now these cells appear to be new grade A cells. They have their QR stickers intact. Usually you'll see these blurred out or removed on grade B cells. And we were also able to pull 100 amp hours when we test the capacity on this battery. Now the first test that we're gonna run on the battery is to test the low temperature charging protection. So I have my adjustable power supply hooked up to the battery. You can see we're charging at about 10 amps. Now I'm gonna take one of these temperature sensors and put it into the ice water. And we're gonna see how long it takes to shut off before it's not charging. Okay, that was pretty quick. You can see now it's only putting 4.35 amps into the battery, but it's actually not charging the battery. It's actually putting that power into the heating pads. So I'm gonna give it about 10 to 15 minutes and I wanna see how hot these get with my temperature gun to see if it's starting to warm up the battery. Now, when I started this test, the heating pads were around 67 degrees. And after about 10 minutes, you can see we're sitting right around 100 degrees. So pretty impressive, they are definitely warming up. So after the test that I've done on both the low temperature charging protection and the heating pads, everything appears to be working properly. If we go ahead and take this out and warm it up, we should start seeing it charge at 10 amps. There we go. Now I've gone ahead and put the battery back together. You can see it looks as good as new. Now I wanna go ahead and show you guys three different ways to charge the battery. So let's go ahead and jump into these demos. Now one of the easiest ways to charge up a battery like this is by using a dedicated LFP charger. This one is a 20 amp model. It comes with these alligator clamps. So all you have to do is plug it into the wall and then connect it up to the battery. And you can see we're charging at 20 amps. And this will take around five hours to fill up the battery. Now, if you're looking to charge your battery a little bit faster from wall power, you can go out and purchase a larger charger like this Ames power converter. This is a 12 volt 75 amp charger and it's completely customizable. For example, you can set it to 20 amps, you can set it to 50 amps, or you can even set it to 75 amps. Now this battery has the full potential of charging at 100 amps, so I connected this charger and my 20 amp charger for a total of 95 amps into the battery and everything worked just fine. Now lastly, I wanna show you guys how you can charge up your battery using solar panels. Now I absolutely love this charge controller. This is my Epever 40 amp charge controller. It's very flexible. It can charge 12 volt batteries all the way up to 48 volt batteries and it accepts up to 150 volts solar input and it'll charge at 40 amps depending on the battery. So you can get anywhere from 500 watts all the way up to 2000 watts into your system. Now when connecting your solar panels to the charge controller, it's super simple. Your positive and negative wire from your solar panels plug into the charge controller, and then you have a positive and negative wire going out to the battery. Now for the testing today, I will be using my portable solar array. This is a cart that I built that consists of four of these 180 watt Bouge RV solar panels, and these are connected together in series. Now I went ahead and connected the solar panels up to the charge controller. You can see we're getting 73 volts input and it was charging the battery at 38 amps. Now this translates to about 550 watts, meaning that we could charge this battery in a little less than two and a half hours. Now, if you guys are interested in picking up any of these chargers, these are currently three of my favorite battery chargers. I'll have them linked down in the video description. Now, if you are looking to connect multiple batteries together, this battery does support series connections up to 48 volts, and it also supports parallel connections up to 400 amp hours. Now, with a combination of both of those, you can put 16 of these batteries together for quite the large backup system. Now, Rodoto has a five-year warranty on their products, at least their batteries, and a two-year warranty on their chargers. And looking at their website, they do have chat support. They have an email support and you can also reach out to their Chinese phone number. Just make sure you call during their working hours. Now, when you purchase this battery, you get a beginner's guide and an owner's manual. And both of these break down lithium iron phosphate to make it really easy, especially if this is your first battery. And it just goes through all the specifications and has a lot of illustrations that help you to make sure that you're using this battery properly. Now, coming to the end of the video, what are my final thoughts on this battery? Well, at $436 with the discount code, I'll have that down in the video description, uh, you get a lot of features and a lot of quality. You get the low temperature charging protection, the built-in heaters. Like I said, there's a lot of brands out there that cost around this same amount, but they don't have those features. So uh, as we did the teardown, I was actually very impressed with the welded on bus bars, 
Um, just everything was assembled so well in that battery. And these have come so far in the last year. Even a year ago, they weren't even using welded bus bars. They were using ring terminals and wires, and usually they were assembled in the wrong way. Uh, if you looked at any of Lithium Solar's videos or uh, Will Prouse's videos when they did the teardowns on these, um, you can see that they've come so far. And that's the benefit of us reviewers doing teardowns uh, because these companies now know that the inside of their battery is going to be exposed to the people that watch these videos online. And so they are adding such a great build quality inside these batteries. Now I had a viewer kind of complain. He's like, I am gonna unsubscribe from you because you tear down these batteries. So I'd love to get your guys' feelings on this. Is it better to have a tear down in the video or not? I mean, I, in my teardowns, I try not to damage the battery at all and it's still fully functional. If I wanted to go around and take a bead of silicone to seal this up, it's gonna be good again. So I wanna know what you guys think. Do I still go forward with the teardowns or am I destroying a brand new battery for no reason? I'd love to get your guys' comments on that. Now for any product that you saw in the video today, including this battery and the chargers that I used, I will have them linked down in the video description. So if you're interested in picking one of those up, you know where to find them. Now, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It lets me know I'm taking my videos in the right direction. And well, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching everyone. We'll see you guys next time.